Yeah, I got, we got a call on a 911 call that the dispatchers told us they had a tractor trailer in the ditch on, in Scarborough. Uh, called it, said it was about ready to roll over. So we actually took the rotator and they said we was gonna have to have another record to pull it out. I backed up to the rear of the truck. We picked the truck up and when I held it up, John kind of just took and winched it on up the hill for us, that way to be more stable. Then once it got past my truck, we went ahead and swung it over to get it back onto the road. The rotator, everybody talks about them, but when you take a rotator out, uh, you're talking 60 ton rotator and this is actually like a crane. It makes the job so much easier to do. When you take a truck out like that, your regular wreckers, they have a hard time of sliding the truck over or just doing what they gotta do. With the rotator, you actually can pick the loaded truck up and swing it wherever you wanna put it, as long as you got a good area side roads and stuff you run into it that's actually the reason he went into the ditch there wasn't enough room and that's in a sharp curve but i was still able enough to pick it up and you can see when i pick it up that i had to let john pull it up the hill a little bit to get it past the end of my truck to be able to swing it into the road it just makes the job so much easier to put straps on it and be able to pick a loaded truck up with a rotator you can basically work off the side of the truck, front of the truck, and it just makes the job a whole lot easier. We got another call, a uh, turnpike call this time. Uh, I think we got dispatched to the 21 southbound. Uh, tractor trailer, flatbed, rolled over, carrying a load of three quarter inch pipe. So we actually took a rotator and took heavy, two heavies, just to get the road opened up. I think it took almost like maybe an hour and 15 minutes, had the road open back up because it was blocking all lanes of traffic. Guy got out all right, uh, nobody was injured. As soon as we got on scene, we hooked up and started rolling the truck back over on its wheels to where we could hook it and get the road open back up. Then we brought the cleanup crew down and they cleaned up all the pipe, uh, debris over the hill. Uh, it took almost two days to get all the pipe picked up and cleaned up. As we got it all loaded up, we loaded it all onto rollbacks, actually got all the pipe loaded back up, brought it back to the shop. The company sent another truck in, another flatbed. We loaded it all into the flatbed and let them take it back to where they was delivering it to. All right, we got dispatched to the 28, I think it was, northbound for a tractor trailer hauling pipe. Their rear brakes caught a fire on the trailer and it messed the axle up so bad on the trailer there was no way to repair it on the road. So the company took and decided we was gonna offload it. So we actually got it temporary up enough to haul it up to the gent area off of the exit 28 to where we could take and do an offload on it. The pipe that was on the trailer is 42 feet long. Pipe, a eight inch in diameter. There was about 40 some joints of it and we just basically set the trucks up on both sides of the rotator, picked the pipe up, swung it and put some of it on the ground to where we can get the cribbing off the trailer to where we could crib it back onto the new trailer right. Actually offloaded the whole trailer onto the other trailer and then turned around, company took the loaded trailer, fixed trailer that they dropped off to put the load on. They took it and went and delivered their load, but then they had us to tow the trailer into our shop, the repair shop, and put a new axle and stuff on it. It made it for a long day because it was snowing and a little bit of everything else. It was just cold, but you'd had to two forklifts out on this scene to be able to handle the pipe with the rotator three to four guys and we took care of everything on this job and it just made it a lot easier. You got remote control, you can stand back and just watch it work. Uh, it, it makes the job 10 times easier. Got dispatched out to Turnpike again, uh, exit 44. Truck was coming up the ramp and when he come up the ramp, he got sidetracked and drove off the side of the, the ramp into the hill took a rotator out there to stabilize it, to keep it from rolling on over. Then we took the other rotator out there and we actually started having to unload it. We had uh, five gallon buckets of honey and we had to offload 
uh, get how many, I think it was 26 pallets of honey that we had to take off. And we just basically restacked it because the load done shifted into the trailer so bad we were scared to try pulling it out. We'd damage the trailer more. Us and the company decided to offload it, bring it back to the shop, then reload it. We took our time and when we done it, we just swung it with the rotator. We had a set of forks that we used like on a crane and you'd be able to pick the pilot up and swing it over to the flatbeds and we used the rollbacks to haul it back in. Then we took the rotator, reset everything and left the rotator hooked to the trailer and as we pulled it up over the hill, we kind of just kept the trailer stabilized to keep it from rolling on over because it's such a steep bank. We just held it and just swung as we pulled the other truck, pulled it up over the hill. Everything come out so easy. Everything that we brought here on the rollbacks we actually put it all back into his box, re-secured it, and he drove off with it without damaging any of the truck or, or the cargo. Ended up good. Plow truck that was rolled over into the creek uh, in Raleigh County. We actually took the rotator down to the scene and kind of basically set up because it's a one lane road and we're set up on the, in the middle of the road there and, Hooked drag winches, uh, hooked to a few trees and done some snatch blocking to uh, get it set back up into the road. Yeah, luckily it was only half loaded, it didn't, nobody got hurt in the accident. Uh, he was just, when we had the real bad snowstorm, trying to get the one lane road opened up and it kind of just slid over into the creek, which once we got set up on it, uh, John and me just kind of rolled it back up out of the creek real easy without destroying it anymore and then we hooked it and actually towed it out of where it was at. It was a pretty good easy job. It's like I've always said with the rotators, it just makes it so much easier on getting the job done. All right, me and Tom took a little trip. We decided to get away for a few days, run down to the Florida Tow Show and check out all the new equipment got away for a little bit, got to see all the newer trucks, got to look at the new equipment, yeah, got to play with them. That's what was nice, yeah. got to run a few of them. Right. <laughs> so it's time to update our fleet a little bit and we're looking at a few new records, that's the best place to go to find one. It gives us a nice break from it all. Took the family, they let them go to Disney World, kind of just got away and, and makes it nice every now and then. Yeah, we had a limo pick us up, I kind of went out a little extra without None of them know him because I had my wife and boy with me and Tom had his wife and I kind of snuck in and had us a limo pick us up, yeah. a stretch Hummer and nobody knew about it. Right. Yeah. We were looking for a taxi cab and behold here's this bus looking vehicle sitting here. So yeah, it was, it was pretty impressive. And it definitely was a lot easier in room. I didn't have to sit beside of him in it. Yeah. <laughs> it, worked, it worked out. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Tom went down to the Florida Tow Show, and while we was gone, we left our buddy George in charge for a little bit, and he experienced a truck wreck. It wasn't too bad. Uh, we just went down there and did what we could do. There's a wreck right there on 77 North. At the, uh, or southbound at the 28. Down around the 28. Took two, the two rotators, took a big wrecker, took five rollbacks, second All right. truck. But you hauled the load in, didn't you? Because you had to offload it down there? Yeah, we hauled it in. Like we usually do, yeah. The load was in, scattered a little bit everywhere. It took them most of the night to offload it. It ended up being a pretty decent wreck for them. They didn't do bad. But he's nervous right now, so bad he can't talk. His camera's uh, bothering him, I think. <laughs> but he done pretty good. He's done a good job. They all did a good job, right? It's uh, different without y'all being there. The grouchy people there, it's like you want to say. Go ahead and say it. The grouchy ones weren't there, so that's it right. went a lot smoother. Exactly. And that's what Billy and John said, right? <laughs> yep. That's what I thought. Up next, a truck fire Glenn's towing caught on camera.
The mountain state's natural beauty is its best kept secret. Evergreen Environmental Management is on call 24-7 to keep West Virginia green and clean, ensuring you and your children have a safe place to work and play. Hazardous materials are all around us, in trucks, trains, and even airplanes. When these chemicals spill, Evergreen is there in minutes of an environmental emergency with proper absorbent materials scientifically designed to attract chemicals and petroleum-based products to stop the spread of dangerous pollutants. Evergreen has the heavy-duty equipment to do whatever is necessary to contain a spill and dispose of it properly. Liquid or gas contaminants can be pumped out and disposed of in accordance with the letter of the law. Contaminated rock and soil is tested and analyzed to make sure the proper disposal method is used and put into action to stop the seepage of pollutants into our environment. Evergreen Environmental Management, there for you to keep wild and wonderful West Virginia green and clean clean.